Do you know what's wrong with Ben? No, he's just been acting really weird lately. I mean, when is he not? But okay. What is that? Seems like a poem. Scuttling corpse and cracking faces. Reality is hallucination. Burning eyes smell where I have bled. They can't kill me if I'm already dead. What are you doing in my house? <laughs> what are you wearing? Looks like you forgot to separate your laundry. This is my Halloween costume. Come on, guys, we gotta get into the spirit of it. It's Halloween, it's spooky time. Let's, let's do it to the max, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Exactly. What's this? Oh, that? Oh yeah, this. No, no, this poem is just a callback to one of my really, really early film projects. I can see you. This is just a one-off of the day. We don't have to do anything with the poem. What are we doing? Today, we're gonna go into the woods and we're gonna find the body that I hid there last year. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Ben Fisk for the Dark Fall Protocol. I'd like to welcome you to our special Halloween episode. Now, in keeping with the theme of ghosts and goblins, today we're going to be undertaking what may be considered by some to be an unsavory achievement. Last year, at around this time, I began achievement number 208, Hide a Prop Skeleton in the Woods. Now, this was originally going to be a one-off. I would throw it out there, and it would be up to my imagination to determine what exactly happened after that. However... I became interested as we were actually doing the achievement. Could I give people an incentive to find Garrett the Skeleton? Which for some reason is its name. I remember that and I have no idea why. Now, Garrett is carrying with him a special surprise. Inside of his skull is $10. My brother and I took Garrett the Skeleton out into the woods where we abandoned him to fend for himself. We posted several pictures about his location and despite the fact that there was $10 in his skull, I can almost guarantee that no one has found him. Which brings us to our achievement today. We are going to go find Garrett the Skeleton and unless somebody has somehow managed to stumble upon him, we're going to take him and hide him in a much more public place, increasing the likelihood that he is going to be found. It's Halloween, there's a crisp chill in the air, and we are searching for dead people. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Habeas Corpses. So here we are on the trail that leads up to the A. Those of you who are familiar with the canon of the Dark Ball Protocol may remember that in this same area, I once hid a crate of supplies. I'm just gonna stop it in the actual thing. You <laughs> <laughs> that was actually my first clue that this is where I was going to be disposing of Garrett. Now, as I look out on this sprawling hillscape, I'm reminded that I don't exactly remember where I hid the skeleton. Uh, it was a long time ago, and it was also at night, so uh, this might be a little more challenging than we had anticipated, but uh, what's life without a little risk, am I right? If my memory serves, it's gonna be that lone, isolated tree up there, kind of at the bend in the road. Unfortunately, this is where we have to go off the trail, and this is where the true exploration begins. Well, let's check the other trees, make sure. No, absolutely, we'll check, but... I wore flip-flops, so I can't come up the road. Okay, I remember that we had to go further up, so now we're climbing this rock face. Shoot, I know he was... I think this is it, I think this is it. You found it? So here we are at where I am almost certain that Garrett was laid to rest. It would be approximately right in here somewhere. His leg should have been in that bush. If I had to guess, I would say somebody else beat us to the punch. Well, it's the truth, folks. We have gone over the photo evidence, we have run some forensic analysis, and it would appear that somebody managed to find my skeleton. Uh, if I assume that I've thrown up the picture of where we did put him, and you can compare that to where I'm sitting right now, and he should be sprawled out right here, but obviously he's not. Uh, I don't know who found him. I can't imagine what was going through their head when they did, and unfortunately it doesn't seem like we'll ever get to know the story. Uh, that being said, I'm sure that I at least gave somebody an interesting story, if not more than that, and at the very least, at least they made the $10 that was crammed inside of his skull. While I would have liked to have found Garrett, it's interesting to know that his final resting place wasn't so final at all. This is Ben Fisk for the Darkfall. Because I was hoping to do so much more today and to celebrate Halloween, that's not exactly where we're gonna end it, as it turns out. As we were walking down the mountain, my good friend and resident nutrition expert, Calvin Mass, offered me the following achievement. Ben, it's Halloween. You're throwing a party and you're in college. We all know you're gonna be drinking. The question is, what? 
And that's when he suggested that I attempt to, off the top of my head, create a Halloween-themed drink of some sort. And because I'm not quite ready to call today, that's what we're going to do. We're going to head to the liquor store, I'm going to see what kind of inspiration grips me, and then we're going to go back to the lab and see what kind of potions and poisons we can whip up today. So ladies and gentlemen, we have made it back to my house, which at this point, while we were out, kind of became Halloween Party Central. Now, in regards to the special Halloween drink, I was struck by two very important ideas. The first of which is that it has to have a component that truly embodies Halloween for children. It has to have something that harkens back to the days of picking out delicious candies from a pillowcase. And in that respect, we're going with Irish cream, a nice, thick, chocolatey flavor. Now, of course, there has to be something to contrast that, something which captures the, the bitterness of a dying planet as one by one the leaves slowly fall to join their fallen brethren. On top of that, we also have to acknowledge that this is the time of the pumpkin spice latte, which is why we're going with pumpkin spice liqueur as kind of a duality between basic people and the death of the entire planet. This is almost what is called a buttery nipple. But because we're going even more basic with it, I'm going to call this drink the Jacket Lantern. So, without further ado, let's see how this tastes. Are you gonna layer it? The pumpkin spice is not mixing with the chocolate, and we kind of tried to layer it, and then that didn't work. <laughs> uh, we have mixed it, and it's become this orange. I mean, I feel like that's pretty damn close to pumpkin colored. Like, that's, that's pretty good. It'll taste fine. Too much pumpkin. It's actually really good. It tastes like gingerbread cookies. Tip of the spoon is in the Baileys. It's in the Baileys. All right, pour. There you go, there you go. Well, look at it from the top, it looks like cotton candy. It's also gonna taste different. Oh no, I'm not endorsing Emmett's classic cream. Emmett's, Emmett's classic, holy sh Emmett, Emmett's classic cream liqueur. Say it, try saying Emmett's, Emmett's classic cream liqueur. No, you, it's not a clear shot. I'm taking it anyway. So today, ladies and gentlemen, we went out looking for a skeleton that we were unfortunately unable to find. However, I feel like two shots to his memory is more than enough. So if you're looking for an interesting, festive, and powerful holiday shot, the pumpkin hits you so much harder than you think it's going to. Go ahead and uh, have a jacket lantern on this fine Halloween. And this is Ben Fisk for the Dark Fall Protocol, signing off! <laughs> it's so loud in here, holy sh**! I'm gonna let you see you today